Good evening, welcome to The Shooting Show. I'm Gerwin Jones. Today's film is about a day in the Thames Valley on pest control, shooting some pigeons on some drillings. We're going to be shooting off this edge today. You can't see from up here, but there's a valley that drops down. There's a big city not far from here. We're on, we're on the outskirts of it. They fly from this city out to the Berkshire countryside. This is where they flush the pheasants over and they fly high pheasants over this valley. We're going to be on the edge just around the corner and you just can't see it from here, but th this valley's all drilled. Any pigeons that come up the valley will see us up on the top and hopefully come and have a look. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. We'll give it a go. Uh, there's some in those trees over there now, but it's early enough yet. There's nothing moving up the main valley, but they'll cross over this one with a bit of luck. Wind's up, which is a probably good wind. This is why I use, or use, get steel fabricated to make my hide poles because there are no poles on the market that'll put up with the abuse that these have over the last 15 years. Look at that, like concrete. Come prepared. There we are. I just looked at them, I thought, well, they'd be perfect on a hide. So you just lean your gun up, and if you've got two guns or whatever, if it's two of you, on the grips, they don't go anywhere, they're really good. I'm gonna put a very thick net. These are brilliant nets, you can't get them anymore. They are made by Realtree years ago. If anybody's got these, hang on to them, they're like gold dust. So I'm gonna put that across low down. And that will just keep anything lower down in the hide completely out of sight, because they will reflect in the sun a bit. And obviously we've got a green behind us. This is the only modern net I've got. It's made by Jack Pike. It's a really good one. There's a video years and years ago, Jim Allbone, I think he did it with shooting times or something like that. It's probably 25, 30 years old. And he's shooting behind one of these nets and talked to him about it. And he just said, he said, the best nets you, you ever made. Right, that I put the empties in. So you can see there's little windows and bits I've just ripped holes in. Right, that's the hide done. So I'm gonna put a whirly. So I'm hoping a lot of what we're gonna get today is gonna be coming from the right and shooting them as they're going right to left. So, if it works, we shall see. So, what we got? Unbelievable how dry this has got. We shot this very same spot. What day is today? Two weeks and two days ago. And you could, it was just really damp then. It's dried out a hell of a lot in two weeks. the ultraviolet on that that's what they see those white bar and those that, that white ultraviolet that's what they see the white the white and this ultraviolet white and the bluish purpley you watch them in there on your garden or on your lawn or anything at home you just watch birds feeding 
I do all the fascinated, just watching me. I never shoot anything in, my, in the garden at all. And the ones out on the drilling, put big gaps, a couple of meters between each one. They don't ever feed, because on drillings, there's not a lot for them to go at. They kind of rummage around and peck and scratch and get the odd seed. This is maize. This is going to be maize for a digester. Um, the reality of it is you can walk over this now. Is you can't find anything, but they're still on it. Ideally, we'd have shot it probably yesterday, day before, but it doesn't matter. We couldn't do it then. So it's just when you see crows, pigeons, whatever on drillings, you very, very, well, you don't ever see them bunched up close together. There's big gaps because they're searching for that odd seed or whatever, whatever, whatever's been drilled on the field. I find it all fascinating because there's such, so many people doing it these days and you need to be ahead of the game because everybody else uses the same methods, blah, blah, blah. And the pigeons get shot. And the problem with it is, is pigeons get shot at and missed and they get educated and they won't come back in again. So once they've been shot, forget it. That pigeon isn't gonna come and look at a whirly or a thing again. Not even that day, God knows how long, two weeks probably, maybe never again, I don't know. But there's so much to learn with this job. But the reality is, is just don't, there's no point shooting recklessly when you're decoying pigeons. Start off, kill, make, make, make your shots count to kill them. Because if you don't, all you do is educate them. And you might be sat in a hide and you're bored one day and a random 60 cent yard flies by minding his own business and it's it's a one in five shot or something like that. There's no point. Unless you know 100% you're gonna, well, not 100%, but if you're very confident you'll kill it, yeah, fine. But if you're not, don't bother because you're just, that pigeon will be there for another day. Quite excited. I got my new Pratsis a couple of weeks back. This is number one gun. Still very tight. I've put about five or 600 cartridges through this one. It's an MX-12, 18.4 boring, full choke. Huge thank you to Tim at Parazzi for getting this to me so quickly and to Mauro Parazzi. These are steel proof. And Mauro has said that I can put anything I want through them. They're proof for everything. So dead excited. But number two gun has not been shot yet. That's in the other case. So you lot can witness the first shot through it. Probably be a miss. So that's stiff. So there we are. That's number two. Exactly the same. 32 inch, full and full, or 40 thou. Unfired and very straight grain. I chose the wood, not the fancy, swirly, knotty, dark stuff, but dead straight. There's a reason for that. There's a lot, lot less muzzle flip, a lot less recoil. If you know you what you know about wood, you look at the old guns from years ago, always straight. Not this modern trend of the swirly, knotty, which is very pretty, but this is far more functional and reduces recoil dramatically. So. Sounds a bit different to the other ones. My other ones were 10, 11 years old anyway. They've had God knows how many hundreds of thousands of cartridges through them. All the loaders love them because they just literally go dump when they're open. Um, but yeah, it was just time for a change. But the main catalyst was all of these last year because we all knew what was coming. And for anybody that didn't, well, I don't know where you've been living the last few years, but I hate to say it, but the steel ban is coming. I'm not for it in any way, shape, or form. And I just not end off. But you know, you've got to go with it. If you've got to go with it, you've got to go with it. That's why I've got them. That's the main reason is they're steel proof. And Mr. Mauro Parazzi has confirmed I can put what I want through them. So that's basically it. So I shall put that in the gun holder. Grip sorted. Not going anywhere. So First time out for this gun. First shots fired. Put some Ely Zeniths in her. Got the shot cam on it. Good to go. 
The other difference with these guns is they're auto safe, which is much better for the grouse. It's much better for everything because I'm not a clay shooter. I don't shoot competition clays or anything like that. So there's blacks coming in from the left. I'm going to have a shot. Jackdaw even. No, I'm not going to be. A, my first shot isn't going to be a jackdaw. <laughs> Here we are, first cartridge fired, got a pigeon. Perfect. When the gun fits, you don't really think about the gun. You just look at the bird that you're shooting at and the gun does the rest. That's the beauty of, of you know, the Parazzi experience where it's, everything is measured to your exact. I shouldn't have bothered pulling the trigger on that. Bobby, stop it. It's actually falling stone dead. I think I may have, you right, coming from the left, there's a pigeon coming. Sneaked up the wind, the little bugger. And he's landed as well, look. See him on the drilling up there? Straight over top of them crow decoys, he's on the drilling pigeon. They're a bit tighter than my old ones. <laughs> and again, black coming round. There's a sneaky crow passing by. Oh, yeah, there's two pigeons and a black. got them. You've hit them and they just think they'll get to the tree and you'll pick them at the end of the day. We're calling it a day. It hasn't really worked today. We've shot a few but nothing like what I expected. What's come has come well. It's come for a look and shot some flighting ones going over the tops of trees and bits and pieces but yeah just not not seen the numbers and we've shot a lot. We've shot well we shot 800 off this hedge line in two outings before now um this year in the last over the last six or eight weeks we've been here twice with a couple of mates so anyway doesn't matter we've had we've had a bit of fun um so i'm gonna pack up the nets and things now and then i'm gonna go get get the car and we'll have a little pickup If you aren't a member of BASC, it's time to join now. BASC, looking after your sport, looking after you.